Eternal life. I don't know about you, but those two words seem like they're kind of a big deal, especially in the whole church industry. Eternal life. Three phrases. Let me teach these to you, and we'll pick them up as we go. These phrases are in Hebrew. If we have any Hebrew scholars here or watching online, I apologize for the ways in which I'm most likely going to butcher their pronunciation. Bear with me. Repeat after me. Olam haba. Olam haba. All right. Olam haza. Olam haza. Tikkun olam. Tikkun olam. All right, that was good. One word, one text, two words, eternal life, three phrases, olam haba, olam haza, tikkun olam, four postures. Now, these postures, I think, are often what people um, assume eternal life means. And I want us to look at some postures, two of them that I think are unhelpful or maybe even wrong assumptions, and then two postures that might give us a, a glimpse at what Jesus is saying when he says, this is eternal life. So for these postures, you're going to need your hands. Everyone got those with them? All right. One will do if you have that, but two, it works as well. Um, if you need to borrow one, borrow one from someone next to you. Uh, first posture is this. Please, I would like you to do this as well. Sometimes when it comes to the words eternal life, I think this is the posture people take. They're just sitting on their hands, waiting. I don't know about you, but I don't really like waiting. I mean, I don't know about you, but this already feels kind of uncomfortable. But just in general, waiting. I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just a typical New Yorker, but if I'm going north, and then west, and I'm, I see a stoplight, but I can cross the street to the west. Well, I'm just going to cross the street now because I don't want to wait. As long as I can keep moving, I'm going somewhere. Sometimes, though, with eternal life, we get this posture. This is the posture we are told or the posture we just take by default, where we are just sitting on our hands, just waiting. What are we waiting for? Jesus says this is eternal life. This is eternal life, knowing God. Sometimes you're sitting on your hands thinking eternal life is a long way off when the reality is it's right here in front of you. This is eternal life, knowing God. You don't have to wait to know God because you can know God right here, right now. Second posture. You can stay seated for this one, but I need your, uh, your full body movement, so take... One of your hands, your choice, point a finger, make it appropriate, and stick it in the air. Sometimes this is the posture we see with the word eternal life. Somewhere out there. We're all pointing to something far, far away. I mean, you might experience this in New York as well when uh, you, you notice you know, more than just the normal crowd at the corner, but a bit more joining and a bit more joining. They're all looking at something. I once read a story about a single person who just stood in front of a building and looked up, and eventually other people joined them looking up. And he wasn't even looking at anything. But we just like, we are drawn to crowds who are doing this. For some reason, eternal life can get stuck in this posture where we think it's somewhere out there. But the good news is that God is not somewhere out there, but God is right here. That's what the words olam haba and olam haza remind me of. Olam haza is a Hebrew phrase meaning this world or this life. Olam haba is the world to come or the life to come. Now, in, in the Hebrew mindset, and these are Hebrew words, which is the language Jesus would have spoke. So when Jesus even talks about eternal life, that word life, which is in your Bible, the Greek word zoe, but he was speaking Hebrew, which would have this olam haba mentality. That Hebrew word olam haba means the age to come. Now, you see, the Jewish mindset would be that they lived in a certain age and they were waiting for the Messiah. And the Messianic age would be the age to come. And Jesus is saying he doesn't say eternal life is somewhere out there. He says, olam haba is right here. Olam haza means this life. Olam haba means that life. Jesus is saying, the future is coming into 
the present. Now, believe it or not, today is still Easter. In the church, we celebrate Easter for 50 days. This is the last Sunday of Easter. Next week begins Pentecost. Now, Easter is this glimpse of God's future breaking into the present. It is the olam haba, the age to come, coming into the olam hazad, this world right here. We don't have to stand around waiting for something to come because it's already here with us. Easter is the future into the present. Or if we take a step back from this text in John and we think about the phrase, the age to come, within the Christian tradition, one simple fulfillment of it is Pentecost. When the Spirit of God, this radical egalitarian spirit, comes upon all of these followers of Jesus, not just some of them, not just the men, but all of them, this is the age to come. We're living in it right now. But sometimes we sit on our hands. Other times we just stand here pointing, waiting for an eternal life that's somewhere out there. And we miss the fact that the age to come has come to us. God can be known right now. Because God wants to know you right now. Now I think two helpful images for eternal life. One of these we already mirrored earlier. Hold out your hands again. And if you are within arm's reach of someone, or if reach out towards them, if you're not within arm's reach, just reach in their direction. And if you have a hand within arm's reach, grasp onto it. Knowing God sometimes feels a little abstract. But knowing each other, now that's a hand I can touch. When Jesus says this is eternal life, I think maybe he's thinking of something like what we're doing right now. You can let go of your hands, you look kind of goofy. <laughs> no, just kidding. Jesus says that they may be one. We heard a song that we might be one. When we find ourselves reaching our hands out and feeling a hand grasp it in return, Maybe you're not just feeling the hand of the person sitting next to you, but maybe God is literally in the palm of your hand. Because maybe, just maybe, you're already in the palm of God's hand. If uh, you grew up watching the Disney Channel at all in the past decade, you might recall um, Zac Efron's breakout role in High School Musical. <laughs> Which, as cliche as that movie was, it had one great moment of prophetic truth. We're all in this together. Or as you may have heard us say around here, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Could it be that we are the ones that God has been waiting for? This is eternal life. Not simply waiting for it someday to come like a meteor crashing into earth. Not simply pointing up somewhere out there thinking maybe it's far, far away. It's feeling the hands of the person next to you and knowing that God can be found right there. Fourth posture. Need your hands one more time. This time I want you to simply hold them in front of you. This is one of my favorite postures. If you're ever looking for a posture for prayer, this is the one I will always invite first. Because this posture says two things to me. It says giving, and it says receiving. This is eternal life. Could it be that this eternal life is not simply something that I keep for me and myself, but it's something that I receive from God so that I might give it to others? This is what the phrase tikkun alam leads us to. Tikkun alam is the Hebrew phrase that means repairing the world, fixing the fracture. With your open hands, you are repaired, and the fractures in your life are fixed by God so that you can use these hands to repair the world around you. This is why every Sunday morning, people from this church come here at 8 o'clock to use their hands to make sandwiches. And people after, are at 1 o'clock, they take carts full of those sandwiches, they push them with their hands into Tompkins Square Park and the parks in the area, and they give these sandwiches out to anyone and everyone who's in the park. 
And this is just one of the many things that we are doing in this community because we take these things seriously, that eternal life is right here. And it is a gift that we share with everyone around us. God has hands. They're attached to your wrists. Now tonight, we're going to celebrate uh, the Sacrament of Communion, which we do every month here at Middle, uh, and it's a, a meal of mindfulness, this celebration of the God's blessings and God's life in us and in the world. And today, as you receive the elements of communion, you'll take a piece of bread or a gluten-free wafer, and you'll dip it into a cup of grape juice, and you'll hold it in your hands. That Bread and juice in your hands is a gift from God to nourish not only your body but your soul because God is always nourishing all of you. Are your hands open to receive it? And God is calling you to nourish the world around you. Where are your hands? What are they doing? Jesus says this is eternal life, that they might know God. We can know God here and now. Because God already knows all of us. And God is inviting us to find eternal life that doesn't just start someday, somewhere, somewhere out there, but an eternal life that begins here and now that we can take into the world around us. One text, two words, eternal life, three phrases, olam haba, olam haza, the world to come has made its way into this one. Takun olam, God is inviting us to repair the world. Four postures. Eternal life is not something we just sit around waiting for. It is not something somewhere out there. Eternal life is found in the palm of your hand as you hold that person's hand next to you. Eternal life is found as you open yourself up to receive this God who is as close as your very breath and to breathe this God out into the world around you. Friends, may we be people today and every day who discover eternal life. Amen.